Today, I am absolutely delighted to be joined by one of Australia's best beach volleyball players. She moved to Australia from Peru as a kid and has become one of the household names of the sport, not only around the world, but definitely here in Australia. Along with her beach volleyball partner, Taliko Clancy, they have already both competed in the Rio Olympics, Commonwealth Games, and are preparing for their second games in just a few months' time in Tokyo. Thank you for joining me, Maria Faye Atasho de Sala. Um, first, I just want to begin with, let's go back to your childhood. How much of a role did sport play in your life growing up in Peru? Um, hi, thanks for having me. Um, so, yeah, I'm originally from Peru and in volleyball over there, it's such a huge sport for girls, like netball is here. And I also had my sister who will play for the national team. So as a younger sister, I was just following her footsteps and would always go along with her to her sessions and her, and her tournaments. So I guess I just picked it up um, faster than any other sports. Um, I started playing, I started playing, touching the ball I guess when I was three four years old and then started playing for school when I was six and obviously started eventually playing for club and everything so yeah I loved it since I was a, a really young age and then um, moved to Australia when I was 11 and continued to play both indoor um, and beach which well I started beach when I was 11 um, here in Australia in Manly and yeah I continued to play both um, till I was 16. How high level did your sister get to with uh, beach volleyball or oh, sorry, vo volleyball? Was that something that you saw how high she achieved in the sport and you kind of went, that's something that I'd like to do? Yeah, for sure. So um, my sister played for the national indoor team um, in Peru. She never really played beach, just indoor. In beach volleyball um, in Peru, it's not, it's not very big over there. It's mainly indoor. Uh, but yeah, she represented Peru in international events and yeah, it was really cool seeing her go away and represent the country. So, yeah, obviously I was like, oh, I want to do that one day. And talk me through this move to Australia because you would have been, I think you were 11 at the time, so you were very young. But was it something exciting as a kid to be coming to Australia and was it as a result of anything in particular? Uh, yeah, so um, I already had the Australian passport, so it was really easy to um, make the decision to just come over I guess um for mum and I and one it was just I guess a change of lifestyle for us and then better opportunities for myself for volleyball here and yeah I was actually very very excited as an 11 year old you know I didn't speak the language so I had no idea about English mm. but for some reason I was just super excited to come and try something new and when I landed in Australia I actually yeah adapted um, so much quicker than I thought. I, um, again, I didn't speak English, but I think, um, being like, uh, I guess not a shy girl, I was always able to make friends and speak with my hands and sport really helped me a lot. Um, just being involved with a lot of sport in primary school. I did year six when I arrived. So just doing a lot of sports, I think that's an international language. So that really, um, yeah, that really helped me. Was beach volleyball you got into something you got into very quickly when you got to Australia? I believe you sort of came to the northern beaches and you said you hadn't really played beach volleyball before you came to Australia. Was that something that you kind of just went, I want to do this straight away as soon as you got here? Yeah, so it was really funny because my brother, who was originally here already, he said, uh, so I came in December in summer and he said, okay, I've organised for you and myself and to other mates to play a social forest site tournament in Manly. And I was like, okay. Um, so as soon as I came, uh, we had uh, games every weekend. So every Saturday we would go down. And literally as soon as I like stepped on the sand and played, I was like, wow, this is so cool. I literally fell in love with beach volleyball straight away. And we ended up winning the tournament. So that was even, even more fun. But how I got into it was I was at a um, New South Wales state uh, like a tryout for indoor and Dita Rokempa, he, um, who was my first coach, I guess, then he said to my mom, Oh, you should bring her down to the beach. You know, I ran sessions there three times a week. Uh, I love to, you know, have her there. So that's really my first training that I had with him. And, um, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And when I was 13, that's when I was like, yeah, I want to do beach volleyball as a career. Did you enjoy, did you always have that sort of competitive spirit? Like you said, that first tournament you play with your brother, you won, and that was a really good feeling. Is that something that you found that you've always had when you've been playing volleyball? 
Oh, a hundred percent. I've been a competitive girl since I literally, since I can remember, like talking to mom and my family, oh, she's like, yeah, she's been competitive since she was born. Um, I will always compete against my sister. Like, yeah, I guess having um, like a brother and sister as well involved in sport, you always be so competitive against each other. Um, so yeah, I've always been really competitive and I, I love winning. Like, who doesn't? <laughs> Now, you said you sort of decided at 13 that you wanted to take it seriously. As a teenager, when you say, I want to take beach volleyball seriously, what does it involve? How much, how many times a week are you training? What's the schedule like for that? So um, when I was 13, I got the opportunity to represent Australia at an under-19 world championships. And I got to travel and experience what um, beach volleyball as a full-time athlete would be like. And that's why um, when I was 13, after doing that, I was, that's why I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, And I know it seems so young, but for me, it was so clear and um, so like real that I wanted to do it so bad. And I was obviously still at school. So I was training um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday after school. Mum would pick me up and we head straight to Manly. Um, and, I, yeah, I didn't really start doing gym, obviously, at that age, but I started more when I was 15. Uh, but, yeah, I will be training and playing a lot um, down in Manly as much as I could. I mean, you've travelled all over the world now and we'll get into sort of the tour and some of the thing, tournaments you're playing in, but to get to grow up near Manly and playing on Manly, is there anywhere else in the world that kind of compares to that, do you think, for beach volleyball? Uh, no, like, honestly, I do love playing in Manly. Like, the energy and the atmosphere is so fun. Um, every time I go back and compete there, it's just um, such a home. Like, it feels so much like home, even though I haven't lived here in in like 10 years. So I don't think, I don't think that feeling will ever go away. Um, but I do have a few spots like Hamburg in Germany. I do have a special spot for that, for that event. Um, the energy again from that stadium and all the fans, it's so electric and it's so fun to play there. And now talking about that under 19 world championships, that was over in Poland, I believe back in 2007. What was it like to go to, I mean, Poland isn't probably somewhere that most people would be synonymous with volleyball, but particularly they've clearly got a, a good tournament there and it was a fantastic chance for you to to show yourself on the international stage. Yeah, I mean, beach volleyball overseas, especially in Europe and I guess South America, actually, even in Asia, it's huge. Volleyball and beach volleyball is so big overseas. Um, so for them, you know, the stadium was packed, everyone knew about the sport and even though it was a under-19 event, um, yeah, everyone was so excited to have an international event there. Um, so, yeah, that was my very first event and I loved it. Um, we didn't obviously win any games. It was um, it was like a first, yeah, first time playing, I guess, overseas, internationally for Australia. So it was good to soak it all in and to get an idea of what it was like to play beach volleyball overseas. But, um, yeah, I was actually lucky enough to play eight consecutive um junior world champs after that one being my first one and my very last one was scheduled at the same place in the same in the same town in Poland um in 2014 so that was my very last junior world champs and we won gold so that was very special because I do remember in 2007 when I watched the final um Netherlands against Italy I said to myself just watching them I was like one day that's going to be me. I'm going to win the junior world champs and um, I'm going to be like that. I'm going to, you know, celebrate like that. And I've had that picture in my head all through my junior years. So clear. And it was just so funny that we actually got to experience it in that same town, that same event. Like it was just such a coincidence that eight, eight years later, my last junior world champs was scheduled to be in the same event as my very first one. And I got to experience winning gold. So it was super special for me. How do you find the Australian sort of beach volleyball scene compares internationally? Like you obviously said, it's massive in Europe, in a lot of these countries. When Australians go over and travel there, is it kind of like, I think Aussies think back to Nat Cook and those sorts of players where we go, okay, we're gold medalists. But when we're talking about going overseas and competing in Europe, it's such a big pool of talent, isn't it? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, uh, I guess for us in Australia, beach volleyball is such a 
it's not a dominant sports like we've got, you know, cricket, rugby, AFL, netball. We've got other such dominant sports that unfortunately beach volleyball is still a very uh, small sport. But, you know, we are we are trying to make it big and um, we hope to get it back on the on the big stage here in Australia. But, yeah, um, beach volleyball overseas is so big. Everyone knows about the sport. Like sometimes, yeah, I've had previously in my early years people asking, like, what's beach volleyball? Like, is it that one that? And some people get it confused with water polo. I'm like, oh my god, how how can you get that confused with water polo? But yeah, it's um it's a little bit sad in that way because our culture it's so beachy and active and outdoor. So it it is a bit confusing that it's not a big sport here. But I think we're getting there. We're definitely growing it here in Australia, and it's it's really good to see um more uh, girls and boys slowly getting um, more involved in the sport because it's it is such a beautiful sport and it's so much action and it's so fun. So yeah, hopefully very soon it will be one of the top sports here. <laughs> now I believe your partner from the Rio Olympics that was Nicole. I believe you two yeah. went to school together. Is that right? Yeah, we did actually. Yeah, we. She was a year older than me, so she was a year ahead of me. Um, but yeah, we uh, we we went to school together, and we actually didn't know each other. We obviously knew of each other because we were both involved in different sports. But yeah, not until she came and um, she came and tried out beach volleyball mainly. We were like, wait, we've seen each other before. I know, I know you from somewhere. And then we clicked that we both went to Kilara, um, and yeah, that was super funny. And how did that partnership start off? Was it clear that from early on when she came down to Manly that there was a really good bond there that could be formed into a team? Uh, yeah, so Nick started playing um, volleyball a few years later than me and so we were we were part of a NTID group, like a national talent ID group um, squad and there was there was heaps of juniors there. I think there was about maybe 15, 15 of us and slowly got cut down, obviously. Um, and yeah, and the opportunity came for us to play together in 2013. Yeah, 2013, we joined up and um, yeah, we were obviously both very um, strong about qualifying to the Olympics. And uh, yeah, we teamed up and yeah, we played together for three years. And so at this time, I think you'd already had that AIS scholarship as well. I think that was 2012 or so. What what was involved in getting that scholarship? Uh, yeah, so I got offered an AIS scholarship at the end of 2012. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it obviously was very, very exciting. Um, beach volleyball, I, I guess to make it in beach volleyball, you had to be a part of that that program and that unfortunately there wasn't much happening anywhere else around Australia but in Adelaide where the national program was based so yeah um, for me obviously I had my dreams and goals and to be a part of that um, like I obviously aimed to be a part of that group so yeah it was it was very exciting when I did get that offer. Do you have many early memories of watching beach volleyball and kind of being a fan I mean obviously in Australia, like I was saying before, when we think about beach volleyball, we think about Nat Cook, we think about Kerry Potthurst and that iconic gold medal moment. But for you, is there something that sticks in your mind in terms of why you love the sport and why you got involved in it? Um, well, it was actually really funny because so my auntie worked at the 2000 Olympics. I mean, in Peru, like I don't think I've ever heard of the Olympics. When I was in Peru, a young girl, I don't think I've ever heard of the Olympics or um, where were they or what were they? So I wasn't too involved in the 2000 yeah. um, Olympics because I was still in Peru. But my auntie, um, she was working at the Olympics and she actually got the opportunity to go to a breakfast the day after Nat and Kerry won gold. And, wow. uh, of yeah, so listen to this. It's amazing. So <laughs> my sister obviously being the one that played volleyball, um, my auntie got a postcard and asked the Nat and Kerry to to dedicate a little message to my sister. And so they wrote, you know, um, D Maria Jose, that's her name, uh, follow your dreams, you know, Rala or something, something, see you on the beach, like something like follow your dreams. And there was a postcard of them in the podium with a gold medal. And so my auntie then flew, she would come to Peru every year to visit us and she gave it to my sister. And I remember so clearly gave, gave this postcard to my sister and I, I like took it and I wanted to have a look and I was like, and it was the photo of them on the podium with the gold medal. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I was like, wow, like I want to be like that one day. I want to do that. I want to do what they do. 
And, you know, I don't know, I must have been maybe six or seven. So fast forward four years later, here I am in Australia, um, trialling out beach volleyball for the first time. I mid carry down at Manly maybe like a couple of months after arriving and then I end up doing beach volleyball <laughs> and play for Australia and going to the Olympics. Like it's just so crazy and that's kind of like I guess the Olympic idea first started for me. Mm. Um you know, wanted to be an Olympic gold medalist um, after seeing that postcard and getting really um, inspired by them. Um, and then obviously coming here and started to play and then meeting them. And yeah, obviously, I guess the rest is history now. <laughs> Would you kind of say that they're the people you looked up to in the sport when you started then because of this, this sort of stature here in Australia or were there other um, athletes or players that you go, no, they're the ones I, I look up to? Yeah, for sure. I mean, they were the first ones that I met and they were the first ones that um, I heard about, I guess, arriving in Australia. So, yeah, for sure. And um, I guess I, it's funny now because Nat and Nat is, you know, a mentor for us now for our team. And she, yeah, she works closely with us, which is awesome. And, um, but yeah, I mean, when I did start playing beach volleyball and I was more aware of the tour and all the players from around the world, uh, I did like I did love Shelda from Brazil. Um, I actually got the opportunity to meet her in 2017 when uh, before the World Champs in Poland, the Junior World Champs, they took us to a World Tour event in Montreal. And I remember clearly just like being in awe of like all these amazing athletes. And I was 13 at that time. So I was like, oh my God, like look at look at all these people. And I guess I didn't really know who was who at that time. My coach was like, oh, this is this, is this person, this is that person. They've won gold here and there. So that was kind of the only time I got to watch them play because not, after, not long after that, they retired. So I wish I'd did um had the chance to watch them more uh, more especially Shelda being you know um such a I guess small athlete but being so amazing um but yeah now I guess now it's changed um I do it admire a few other athletes on tour yeah do you still get that feeling of being I guess a little bit starstruck at certain t- tournaments even though you sort of been traveling around the world for the best part of 12 13 years now playing beach volleyball um, you mean by other athletes or yeah. by me playing on tour? Oh, no, but yeah, athletes? just by other athletes. Some of the names oh, that you get to um, play against. Oh, I mean, some of them are still playing. Like, Kerry Walsh is still around. Like, she's still winning. She's still doing great. So that's pretty awesome to be able to play against her, you know. Um, and then um, who are the ones? I guess there's heaps of new ones. But, I mean, all the Brazilians are still playing. They're still around. Um, you know, Laura Ludwig, she's still amazing and it's so fun to watch her play. Um, and, yeah, there's obviously heaps of new ones too that I, even though I play against them, it's still pretty awesome to um, to watch. So in 2016, you and Nicole win, I believe, it was the Asian Continental Cup final to sort of book your place for the Olympics. What was it like knowing that you were going to the Olympics and you'd get a chance to be on that podium like Kerry and Nat were on that postcard from all those years ago? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, I'll never forget that moment. I've literally visualized that moment for so many years leading up to that event. And I had my family there. I had mom come from Peru. Um, it was so, so special. And yeah, after winning that match point, which made us qualify, it was just, I don't think I could actually describe it. It's a, it's just a moment where yeah, I can't really put words into it, but it's like so much work and, um, you know, sweat and tears got into it that for it to come true and real that, my God, like we're going to the Olympics. I mean, it's the athlete's dream to qualify to Olymp- to Olympics um, and obviously win after that. But, um, yeah, for that moment just to be able to qualify, it was just a, yeah, it was unreal. A moment I'll never forget. Was it special being able to make your Olympic debut, I guess, in South America, in Rio? Did you have many family come over from Peru? Yes, it was actually super, super cool because, I mean, Copacabana, like, you (laughs) can't beat it, right? Like, it doesn't get better than that. Number one, that. And then two, obviously, being in South America, I had... Oh, like I had about 10 of my family come and we're not a quiet bunch. Like we are loud. And they were just like, they had shirts of, oh, it was just so funny. They wrote a, a thing called Barra Bra, um, Barra Brava, which is like, I don't know how to describe it in English, but it's like, uh, 
I almost like the rowdy squat. I actually don't know how to <laughs> translate it, but it's something like that. And yeah, there were, um, yeah, they were all there. And I think, and some, for some of my family members, like my aunties and uncles, that was the very first time they actually ever saw me play. Oh, okay. So for them being the first time at the Olympics, like you can just imagine there was tears from finish to, from start to end of the game. And yeah, it was super cool to have them there. Did you feel a bit of pressure knowing that they were all watching you as well? Uh, I put pressure, like. I think it was just more excitement and joy to be able to to have them there. Obviously, um, being so far away from them, I don't really get to see them often and they don't really get to watch me that often either. So it was just a very special moment just to be there with them. Obviously, the results didn't go how you would have wanted them in Rio, but was it kind of amazing that there were so many other parts of the Olympics that made it such a worthwhile experience, like having your family who hadn't seen you play before over there and just getting to be involved with the Olympics as well? Yeah, 100%. I mean, obviously, we as athletes, go. we don't just go to the Olympics to just be a part of it. We go to there to win. But, um, yeah, regardless of the result, um, I had an amazing experience. And I, what I most took out of it was it really motivated me to come home and work really hard to be where, um, you know, the, the medalists were at the top of the podium, which I loved it. Like I was like, oh, I want to, I want to be at the top of the podium. I, I want to be an Olympic medalist. So that really motivated me and just being surrounded by, you know, uh, the best athletes in the world was obviously an epic experience and a part of it all. And having my family there was, yeah, it was good. So after those Olympics in Rio, when, when was the decision made to partner up with Ataliqua and um, I guess prepare for the Commonwealth Games? Yeah, so 2016, Rio was 2016, and then 2017 was actually a very interesting year uh, for all of us. There was a few changes in the program and a few new people come in, and we all had our own um, challenging times um, in different ways. And the opportunity came for us to team up at the end of 2017, and we we already had played together in 2012 at a Junior World Champs in Halifax where we got bronze. So we already knew that we had something something very special there. Um, and then we teamed up at the end of 2017 and we connected straight away. We won our first three international events. So we knew we had something something there that we, you know, it was we needed to continue to um to explore. So um yeah, that's when our partnership started. And yeah, it's been so it's been so fun. T and I have a a really um a really special chemistry between us, you know, on court, we feel each other, we're on the same page, we have the same, you know, um, goals and, um, yeah, we balance each other really well. So it's really, it, it's something that it doesn't come easy with any partnership. So um, it's been a, a super fun journey so far and I'm excited of how far we can take it because we, we're still a really technically fresh team. I mean, we've only been together for, for three years. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited for what we can do. Some of the other partnerships on tour, how long would they have been playing together for? Some of like the other gold medal hopes, I guess. Oh, um, there's a lot of teams that have been playing together for over four or five years. I mean, there's teams that have been together for two, three Olympic cycles. So, you know, well over 10 years. Um, but, um, but yeah, so that's, I guess, an advantage for us. We still have so much room to grow and, um, and explore things with our team. So, um, that's, that's a really exciting thing for us. That 2018 Commonwealth Games must have been a pretty special um, competition for you guys. I mean, just missing out on that gold medal in that final match, but to be playing in front of a home crowd that was just cheering you on, it must be a pretty amazing memory to have. Yeah, Com Games was actually so cool. I mean, to be a part of history, the first time beach volleyball was a part of it. And at home in front of family was just a um, really cool experience. I mean, they they did an amazing job at the whole setup. Um, it was so, so cool. And, yeah, it was definitely an event we'll never forget. And obviously, yeah, coming short in the final against world number one, um, we again, it was kind of our biggest first event together. We, we were pretty fresh. And um, Canada, I mean, Canada, we're on fire, world number one on tour and everything. But, um, yeah, um, I think it was just the start of something for us. So, yeah. Did that silver kind of really get you prepared for the Olympics and go, 
Okay, we've got silver now from the Commonwealth Games, but our next goal is Tokyo 2020, well, 2021 now, but Tokyo 2020 at the time. Yeah, um, yeah, we sat down actually in, in 2018 and we wrote all our goals um, that we wanted to achieve. And so far we've ticked every single one and there's only one more to go. So, um, yeah, we're super excited for Tokyo. Um, we can't get to get out there after a year of <laughs> pause, I guess, but... Um, in a way, like looking at the positive, we've um, used this year to 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 be even more prepared, and I think it's it's been an advantage for us. So yeah, we can't wait to get out there. You speak about the pause. I mean, twelve month postponement of an Olympic Games is quite incredible to think about. What did you use that um, extra twelve months? Did you take a break? Did you put extra training in? What, what sort of um, did you put into the last twelve months? Um, so we actually relocated states. So we moved to Brisbane, which has been amazing. Um, T is actually from Queensland. So for her, it was really good coming back home. And for me, um, I've loved it, to be honest. I feel right at home. So I'm super happy as well. Uh, but yeah, we we didn't really take a break, to be honest. We trained all the way through. We were pretty lucky that whilst we were in Adelaide, things were really good in Adelaide. So we were able to still go outside and, and keep training. And then when we left Adelaide Brisbane was really really good so <laughs> it was just perfect timing um but yeah we trained all the way through we really it was a really good time to really focus on our individual um I guess development and really technical things so um, we were able to um grow and yeah just be um much better prepared for for this year how did you feel when you found out the games were going to be postponed? Was it a bit of a shock to that sort of plan and list that you had or were you prepared to go, okay, it's just an extra 12 months? Um, yeah, look, to be honest, I, like I saw it coming. Things went south real quick yeah. um, and it was just hard to to see it happening. Uh, but, yeah, we we stayed really positive. We, you know, things like that, it is what it is and you can't control it. So you had to focus on what you could control and staying really focused and positive and, you know, what are the good things about it? And that good things about it were that we had an extra year to prepare. We had an extra year to train and continue to grow. Um, and, uh, yeah, like at the end of the day, health comes first. And, um, yeah, look, it wasn't there wasn't much point getting too caught up on it and, you know, negative about it so yeah now obviously you're in hotel quarantine at the moment coming back from mexico where yeah. you guys got a fantastic gold medal in cancun is this the first time you've been overseas to compete since everything happened yes so that was the first event after a year and a half it was funny because our last event was actually in mexico and we won gold so that was back in 2019 so we finished off the season on top and we loved Mexico and then 2020 happened and then yeah we got the opportunity to go back to Mexico and we had three events obviously our first two didn't go to what didn't go as well as we anticipated but it was good to finish the last event with a gold and um yeah it obviously it was challenging I'm not gonna lie it wasn't all glamorous it was very hard um you know going back into that same level of competition after a year and a half um it, yeah, it took us a little bit of time to, you know, get the ball rolling, but we got there at the end and, yeah, excited to kind of pick up where we left off. <laughs> Are you worried at all heading into the Olympics about maybe a lack of international competition that some of the your competitors in Europe might have been able to compete a little bit more frequently than you have? Um, oh, look, I mean, the thoughts are there. You know, you always wish you had more tournaments under your belt and more competition. And then, you, yeah, you do think like everyone else around the world is still playing and competing and traveling, you know, freely without having to quarantine. So, yeah, those thoughts are there. But again, like I, we can't get caught up, you know, thinking too much on, on that. And and you got to think, look, um, we've done the job. We've we know we can do it. It's, you know, we have to believe and trust and have faith that we, we are able to do it. Um, and I think that's when it comes, that's what's going to come down to. I think um, just that trust and belief that we are capable of, of um, yeah, getting there. How do you feel about everything happening in Tokyo right now? Do you have any concerns about potentially going there in July? Or are you confident it's all sort of going to be sorted and they're going to be putting in the right protections for the athletes? Oh, look, if anyone can do it, Tokyo, Japan can do it. <laughs> um, 
yeah, look, I feel so sad for them because I knew it was going to be a, an extremely incredible Olympic Games and they've put so much, you know, money and effort and work into it. And I'm still... I, I'm still sure it'll be an amazing games. Um, but yeah, uh, I feel, yeah, I mean, the locals right now, <laughs> they're, um, they're having, you know, I saw they're having some process about it, but um, I know Tokyo and everyone involved are doing everything they can to keep the locals and us safe. Um, no doubt they'll have everything in place and so much order and they'll do the right thing. So, I mean, no doubt we'll all feel um, secure and safe when we're there and as well, keeping their locals and their communities safe. It's going to be a very different games to Rio. Uh, no probably travelling family, potentially no crowds at all and no chanting or cheering, yeah. only a bit of clapping. clapping Have you yeah. ever played in, a, in an experience like that in such a big tournament with no crowds there? Definitely not. Not in such a, like, being in a big, huge stadium and no crowd. No, I don't think I have. If anything, like Mexico, obviously no crowds were allowed, but um, there wasn't, like, a big stadium set up, so you didn't feel like it was empty. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be very weird. But, um, I, I mean, once we're on the court, you don't really kind of um, I feel what's going on outside the court. You're kind of, like, in the game, in the moment, and what's happening around you, it's kind of – uh, a blur in a way sometimes so um but I don't know I'll probably I'll get back to you on that one after and see how how it felt but yeah um regardless if there's a crowd or no crowd um I'm sure it'll be it'll be amazing I've just got a final couple of questions more general about your career and stuff today to finish off uh, the first one is yeah. what motivates you if it's a if it's a cold morning training I mean it, I think you're in Sydney as well right now and it's absolutely freezing what what gets you up in the morning to motivate you to train? Uh, my goals and my dreams do. Um, I also love inspiring people. I love, um, you know, it hasn't been like anyone else. I'm sure everyone's got gone through the obstacles, but um, yeah, I've had to obviously work really hard and um, I love just overcoming challenges. So reaching my goals and dreams is what motivates me. And um, I've actually got the um, Olympic gold medal on my, above my, my TV so every day I come to it and I love visualizing so yeah I see it and if it's freezing raining I see it and I'm like all right come on let's go <laughs> you mentioned overcoming challenges is there anything in particular that you can look back on in terms of challenges and go I'm really glad I was able to get over that um oh yeah god I mean the journey is never a smooth rise. It's never easy. Otherwise, everyone would do it. But, um, yeah, look, from, you know, that big injury I got in World Champs and still come away with bronze was a massive lesson, like resilience, you know. That was an amazing experience we went through as a team. And then, obviously, early in the years in my career, um, people just not believing that I could make it as a professional, you know, um, due to my height. And that just kind of gives you more um kind of fire you know in your belly to to um to yeah to I guess not make them put limitations on yourself because no one should ever put limitations on anyone um so yeah it's it's a matter of how how bad do you want it and the final question I ask people but it, it almost feels like you've answered it there is about what are you most proud of in your career to date but it sounds it's it's almost like just being able to prove people wrong and have so much success in the sport uh, I guess like, I don't know if it's about proving people wrong, but at the same time is I love um, being like an example that, you know, um, if people say to you, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. Like it's why that's like so unfair. Like you shouldn't do that. No one should kind of get in the way of, of your dreams and your goals. So it's about, you know, how much you're willing to put um, into it and, you know, how much you'll, willing to be disciplined about it and uh, persevering about it and you know how much do you want it so for me that's like I love doing it for that I love um you know working hard for myself and I love you know proving my proving myself that I can do anything I want so um yeah <laughs> that's what makes me proud I guess like all the little challenges that I've had to go through and how I've overcome them myself well, Maria Faye, I think that's a wonderful mantra to have and we wish you all the best for the Tokyo Olympics coming up and hopefully in the future, just like that photo of Nat and Kerry, for you, 
that maybe there's a photo of you and Taliqua holding gold in yes. Tokyo that <laughs> inspires the next generation of beach volleyballs here in Australia. Thank you so much for joining me. Yes, thank you. Thanks so much for having me.